was four in the morning. I woke up about a half hour ago and decided, you know, I would go ahead and organize things so I could get started with my day since, you know, I've got enough energy. I'm not going to sleep again. You know, <clears throat> just a normal thing. Wake up in a clogged house in the winter and uh, just the air is not all that great. I need an air purifier. But uh, just having my coffee and uh, I got to do my... Uh, <clears throat> my pistol trigger training, which using my G Sight ELMS, my third generation, and I clean and lubed this Glock 23 last night, and <clears throat> this is a daily thing for me. Even though today is going to be agility training, every day you can spend three minutes total dry firing with a laser. You know, with your your part timer, <clears throat> and today it's 0.5 of a second. I'm hoping that'll be within that window, but again, it's a window, and it's not really me forcing myself. I want it to come naturally. That's why I do it every day because I got millions of chances to do that. <clears throat> so here we go. In between the coffee, this is what I'll be doing. We got two sets of this to do, and. The animals are active this morning. Hey guys. Okay, so that's one set with the uh, pistol and I'm going to do another set. I always like to do 50. I mean, come on, it's only three minutes total. Put a little rest time in between there for your wrists and stuff and to have coffee. And uh, after that, I'm going to be doing some reading of this book. It's up for review, so obviously I'm not going to put any real screenshots or anything like that. But I'm getting into the more interesting parts. Because uh, <clears throat> the first parts are more mundane. But, uh, you know, it's all good information. But yesterday I was able to get the steel sights on the uh, Glock 23 and I was able to install them myself because I got a front sight tool and then I just used a nylon hammer um, one of the little uh, hammer and punches like one of the real cheap I think it's Lyman with the little wood organizer it has a little nylon cap and then I used like a wooden pencil like those construction pencils and uh, just hammered that hammered the rear sight into place and use my laser trainer to get a roughly verified zero, right? So, uh, yeah, <clears throat> I mean, we'll see down the road if it's all good, but I guess uh, it's time to do a, another set. And then afterwards, I'll take you guys along for my next, my next part, which would be, so, Coffee and pistol trigger, these are just my notes, so if you can't read it, too bad. But then, physical training one, so pistol isometrics weighted, and I'll be doing that in gear, because it'll put a little strain on me. Then I got ammo lift to the side, so that'll work on the uh, middle deltoids. And then rifle track, so uh, that, that'll be interesting. So I, that'll go in after rifle presentation, so it's going to go right after, so... Uh, all of this is upper body, so it's not going to have anything to do with my agility, which is going to be pretty much leg work, because you're going to be doing a lot of rushes and stuff like that, so, <clears throat> anyways, yeah, so, got to do a rain sprint today, that's the most leg work that I'm going to be doing, so, I'm trying to leave it all for the technical work, so, I'll see you guys around when, you know, I get done with these, uh, sets and, when I get going on my first physical training, so. Okay, so the plate carrier's on. Now we gotta put on the gloves. So what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be using my pistol, and I'm going to have a weight on the end of it, and I'm gonna be performing a 45 second isometrics, basically pointing as horizontal as I can, perfectly parallel as I can, and pointing at a small object, or a small target, if you will and trying to keep the sights aligned and I'm going to center it over the ejection port 
uh, or the rear portion of the ejection port. That way it's a little bit more forward, but uh, it's more going to work the shoulders. And this is going to help me stay on target and uh, give strength to the areas that stabilize the pistol. So typically when you go from a ready position to a firing position, this should help those muscles. And I've noticed a marked improvement in using this exercise. So, this is my weight. Swiss shoulder bag, and I've got magazines in here, so I'm not even sure how many total. So, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 11. 11 fully loaded AR magazines in here. And this has got the Spanish style, you know, uh, clip, so it can be a real bugger sometimes. So, I'm going to use my dry fire part timer. I'm going to do six sets of this. 45 seconds on, 45 seconds off. So, in isometrics, it's completely fine, and you'll get a good muscle recovery if all you do is a rest for the equal amount of time that you are conducting your isometric exercise. So, there is no need to sit there and do like a three minute rest. So, I'm going to go ahead and conduct this, and I'll have 45 seconds, so might as well start now. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to find a small point on the wall here that's nice and horizontal. In 45 seconds, this is going to hurt, but completely necessary. And I'll just stay at a very well compressed position right here to relax the shoulders. But, yeah, not going to be fun. But this is basically how I'm holding it. Basically have it behind the ejection port. And then, I'm going to straighten it out a little bit real quick and then my hand overlapping one side and then the trigger finger holding the other side 45 seconds is a long time and here we go good firing you know stance and this the reason you're doing it in full gear is to basically you know simulate that and you know, it's gonna perf you're going to get a different extension with a pistol with full gear, like with a plate carrier and everything, than you would if you were slick. So, this is actually a pretty big deal to do this. And I'm already shaking, so six sets of this. I don't know. It's a lot. Ah. 45 seconds. You know what? Whew. That wasn't too bad, but wow. Coffee break. Yeah, you're definitely going to get a, a bit of a burn in the shoulders because I can't even go at exact full extension even with these swimmer cut plates. So. <clears throat> Don't choke on your coffee. Let's see if I move this back a little bit, if I can get a little bit better results. So basically, putting it on my firing hand like this, and then grasping it from the rear. Ah. Keep those sights aligned, and enjoy the pain, because it'll be the last time you feel that pain, right? I don't know. <laughs> but I'll tell you, these new steel sights, better than the Palmer ones, that front sight, it, that front dot is big, so it fills in the back very nicely, but yeah, I'm shaking like a, a leaf in a hurricane, Woo. it's tough to keep that firing position, I can definitely feel it, Whew. the way this layout is, with these pouches at the back, it's really helping counterbalance this a little bit, because having tin weights in my butt here, and 10 weights hang out, or 10 pounds hanging in the butt, and 10 pounds out front, like that. Oh my God, that's that's hellacious. That's how you that's how you work out your back. My goodness. So actually, I was doing it wrong. What I need to do, it's kind of like this. And yeah, that's how how you do it. To where both hands are being used. There we go. Nice and secure. It's not the perfect grip on the pistol, but, you know, 
the whole point is you're using the pistol to get used to the angle of the pistol and using the sights for an alignment so it's a discipline to hold it really still and you're trying to find a small point Ooh, this sucks oh. Oh. I got four and a half minutes left so three more sets so I'm halfway through I'll see you guys on the last set Oh, this is miserable. Okay. I gotta move back to my wrists now, behind my hands, so I can get a proper grip, but I'm still shaking like a leaf. This sucks. Ah, another small spot. Oh, just. And. Yep. That sucked. <laughs> yeah, my shoulder is feeling it. I had enough work yesterday. Oh, man. Having to help dig out that FedEx guy, my shoulder was already feeling it. And my primary shoulder, I mean, you can't really get a isometric hold. Or, uh, not an isometric, but you can't really get a, a isosceles, you know, stance with this stuff. At least not a good one. But, holy crap, that was painful. So, PT1, that is good. So, we can cross that one off. And now, we do a range sprint. It's not even light out. I'm not going to be busting my butt uh, going down to the range right now with no light. Because it was icy yesterday. I can only imagine what it's going to be this morning. So, PT2. Side ammo lift, so 15 reps, really slow, and you know, up, and then so basically using that same ammo uh, bag with the same amount of crap and same amount of weight, so it's only 10 pounds, but concentrating on isolation of the deltoid only, so I get to take this crap off. So yay! Now we're getting into the shoulder exercise. I have a I. You can either use a timer or a stopwatch, but since I'm going to be doing shoulder exercises, they recover fairly quickly. And I'm going to be doing six sets, so it's going to be a little bit um, a little bit hard. That's why I'm not using too many reps uh, per set, because I'm going to get a good burn from doing a lot of sets. So I'll have three minutes. Three minutes is a good time to reset the muscles and actually get the uh, neuromuscular uh, a neuromuscular reset, if you will. The way to grab this ammo bag would just basically be putting your wrist through like this and then grabbing on, at least with your pinky and your uh, thumb, and then just grabbing on. And what you're going to look for is rotating the top of your hand forward, uh, if anything. If it's going to have any rotation, it'll be more forward. And that way it'll uh, concentrate on the side deltoid. So you want to make sure that it's perfectly to your side and then go up and then full range of motion to the crotch about the crotch level here so that's one two three oh this sucks four start my three minute right there so I should be done on the other side in the same amount of time so again start from the crotch and then straight out no shrug one two Whew. Man, 
I still got a minute and a half left for a rest for this side. So, yeah, I'm going to need a six sets of this. Sucks. And actually, in order to get through these six sets, I think I'm going to have to downgrade the weight to magazines. It's called being smart about your limitations. These are fully loaded with 30 rounds, maybe even 31. Some of them will actually hold 31, so it's fully loaded. I'm not sure how much it weighs, but it's enough to cause pain. I'm concentrating on proper repetitions, and if I need more of a more of a workout, then I just go a little bit slower. So do it smart, get a good workout on that specific muscle group, and uh, should be good. So, yep. And here we go for the next set here in 40 seconds. Set number six. This is gonna hurt. Totally necessary though for, you know, growth. <sighs> okay. <sighs> now we start the three minute timer. This shoulder is done. Now, this one. Offset the feet so it can go in between. So, slight lean or outward. Just taking that one real slow. So, we are done with second. Second workout. And I like to mark the end times. 5.52. I know a lot of people don't really take me for being much of a health nut, but this is turmeric powder. I prefer fresh turmeric. And then it, there's also ginger powder. I prefer, prefer fresh ginger, but you know, this will do. And then I have fresh garlic cloves in here that are split open for the minerals to get into the water and sesame seeds. And sesame seeds are floating right now. But uh, also, I have a tea bag in here. So this is all good anti-inflammatory stuff. So this is a good tea for, you know, a post-workout or just th for your daily routine or whatever. So, you know, this is the kind of stuff that I like to prepare myself on days when I'm going to really be hurting or I know I'm going to hurt the next day. So this is a lot of upper body uh, physical work, but today for my agility training, it's mostly going to be lower body because you're going to have to get up and out of position. Yes, there's going to be some core work, but, you know, and some back work because you're going to have to lift up that stuff and move up, but, you know, this should... Uh, this should help uh, kind of tame some of the pain a little bit. Okay, so next thing we need to talk about is uh, I'm at a split in the road. The sun isn't up yet. or it, It's not at that point where I can do my rain sprint because I timed that and I want to stay within, uh, within a minute, so under a minute. But I have a rifle presentation that I have to do in full gear because my presentation, you know, I'm going to use my rifle in gear most of the time, so I want to make sure my presentation is within a second or at least uh, practice my uh, presentation you know with 50 reps and I want to do that in gear uh, then I also have my third physical training exercise which is rifle tracking which that is going to be uh, the rifle is going to be weighted and I'm going to do 25 reps of that horizontally so I'm going to be moving side to side so you're going to use your your legs a little bit for movement but it's more going to be stability of the back and the core uh, but that's not going to need gear. So, uh, and here's where the discussion comes in. Do you do your technical work first, i.e. the rifle presentation, even though that's with gear on, or do you do your workout first? Well, I would always say to do your technical work first, because the idea of doing your technical work and your technical repetitions is to build procedural memory. If you work out and you uh, stress your body out, uh, it's going to be a lot harder for you to develop a procedural memory. Even if you already know how to go through that procedure, it, you always want to make sure that you're working on your technique before you're actually working your body to, you know, to failure. So, 
do your techni uh, technical work before your physical training. So that's what we're going to do uh, right now. That's why I have rifle presentation before on my schedule. And that's the reason why I have my rifle presentation. I've had this thing plugged in because I'm running out of battery. I'm not really a vlogger, so, you know, I apologize, sort of. So I have rifle presentation before my physical training. So, and then I have my agility stuff, but I'm going to have to backtrack and do my range sprint. And I have to time it, and I do put my end times on this just to kind of keep track of how much time it takes me to do stuff. So, anyways, uh, that means that I'm going to go ahead and have to gear up. And I will perform this technical work. So I will have one second to basically present the rifle and dry fire it. So always use a snap cap when you're doing stuff like this. So basically you're not uh, destroying your firing pins. And yeah. These A-Zoom snap caps will save your rifle a lot of trouble. So invest in them. It's definitely worth it. So, yep. All right, so, one second to basically present, take the safety off, and uh, fire an aimed shot, you know, metaphorically, or, you know, a fake shot, a dry shot. And I have six seconds to reset afterwards. So usually I can beat this time pretty easily, but it's more of a more of a test of you know me being able to do the procedure properly and have absolute accuracy. So you know, no big deal. But uh, I'm going to be doing this five times, so it's going to be ten repetitions for a total time of a minute and fifteen seconds to include my uh, recovery time. I think six seconds should be sufficient. Usually what will happen is I'll, I'll basically pull the bolt back a little too far and uh, the, uh, the uh, snap cap will get hung up. So I have to kind of uh, release the tension and push the snap cap more in line because the ejector tries to push it out and it pushes it just off. So, yeah. So here we go. Let's go ahead and work on it. No. Man. Today is not my day, is it? There we go. So I'm starting to get within that window, so, you know, that's the first set. God, it's getting hot in here, but, yeah. So I gotta do that four more times, and uh, then I'll have 50 reps of that, and I'll see you on the last set, as usual. <sighs> okay, so I'm on my last set now, and uh, basically my last set of 10, so it'll uh, go up to 50. So for all of you that are at home right now and probably self-quarantining, you know, or those of you who actually have time to do this kind of stuff now and may want to try, um, I recommend not working out or doing any kind of shoulder workout when you're trying to do this stuff because I'm shaking like a leaf right now and it is totally screwing up my coordination. So it's going to start adversely affecting my ability to do this properly. So I had to extend out the distance and increase the size of the target. So basically working on close range presentation, which is what this basically is for anyways. But uh, you try to make the target as small as possible in order to demand more of yourself. And that way, you know, in reality, when your target is like this friggin' big, it's going to be no big deal. Uh, it's going to be this big, but there are some targets out there that are that big. But anyways, uh, that's just my little spiel on this. So do your technical work before you do any physical training. This is a this this is something that you live and you learn with. And I thought I could risk it today that my shoulders would be fine or whatever, but it still hasn't recovered from having to dig out the FedEx guy from delivering my clock sites yesterday. So. Got caught. 
I didn't follow my procedure. Bayonet out and bayonet towards the target, like you have a bayonet on there, and then pull back in. And that usually works to for this high port stuff. Yeah, you can typically get right on if you do that. That felt really slow, but I guess that was actually a pretty good speed. So I'm, you know, just under a second for the most part, but I'm still trembling like a leaf. I'm not right where I want to be, but my uh, uh, the fatigue that my muscles are experiencing are affecting its uh, range of motion and uh, its coordination to do uh, fine movements. So I may not be hitting right here. I may be hitting over here or over here. So. You know, it can happen. If you're working yourself too much, your muscles won't want to cooperate in quick movements, and it won't be as finely coordinated as if it was fully rested. So, you know, it happens. It's good to test yourself, though, to see how much you can, uh, your muscles can be affected by that. But anyways, time to down dress and, uh, you know, work on my physical training part of this. So, yay. It's the last of the tea. So I'm getting my little garlic clove pieces in there. So oh, I'm gonna have to do something about my sinuses, and this is doing a pretty good job. It's clearing it out. It's probably mostly the ginger, but yeah, stuff's running out, sneezing, and whew, my sinuses have been not liking this winter, and I think I'm allergic to one of the animals in this house. But yeah. So anyways. We're going to work on rifle tracking. It's the exercise. So we're mixing technical with we're mixing technical with uh, PT, right? So we're putting it in the PT category. So basically what I have here it's not all that complex. Got a 10 pound weight, 550 corded to the center line or at least the balance point, close to uh, the balance point between these uh, two parts, so the front end and the or the front hand and the rear hand. So the balance point is typically like right here, just behind the actual grip itself for the AUG. <clears throat> but I want the weight just a little forward of that uh, to where both of these hands have to actually work when it's in the shoulder. So it's going to be held tight to the shoulder. That way, the the actual weight is all pushed. On these two hands to actually work together and and hold it up while I'm tracking so how this is going to work is I'm going to pick two spots in the room and square up with I'm squaring up with my door um, and get you know a good yeah just a, a good like isosceles stand so you're squared off and then basically you know bend the knees a little bit and then you move horizontally using your knees and so go corner to corner oh. yep and oh set her down and now oh that was pretty harsh on my uh, on my core and my my back. And I was uh, wasn't so bad on my muscles because you're constant on my shoulders because you're constantly moving and you're basically bracing yourself. So it's not too hard to hold 10 extra pounds up, especially when it's really close and you can have 90 degree angles on your arms. But I am going to need, I'll say, two minutes. So give myself a two minute rest and that's one set and I'm going to do this four times so just horizontal movement you can go vertical as well and that's actually going to work really well for your ready up drill so if you're working from a low ready this one is better for tracking like uh, being able to snap to a position you know for leaning because when I'm turning like this I'm actually leaning and having, having to lean over in order to get pointed in that direction so this works on those muscles uh, for moving the rifle around and tracking uh, tracking a target or just uh, getting into a position so it it works and um, <clears throat> works on those muscles basically so yeah 
doing uh, four sets of that. The basic principle in all these workouts is do do more than three sets, so four minimum, right? So uh, I want to build this up to where I'm doing ten pounds for about five or six sets. And the more sets you do, the more muscle growth you're going to have. But yeah, it'll it can burn you out a little bit, but definitely worth it. For those of you who have asked or been wondering why are you wearing OD in the wintertime or why are you wearing OD at all, uh, I was actually going to be attending the One Shepherd Training Institute and they need oh, you need an OD uniform and gear and also woodland, I've already got that covered, but I like to train in my gear that I'm going to be working in to see if it works because the company that I go through, Hell Context, uh, they have a lot of products and I like a lot of their products, so I want to figure out which uniform works best for me so I could attend that, but it's up in the air with all this stuff going on right now and all the quarantining that has to happen. So, on to the last set of rifle tracking. Yay! This isn't going to hurt at all. My arms are definitely feeling it, so it's going to be a good shoulder workout. So, uh, some changes is I hiked up the uh, 550 quarter, I cinched it up to where it's closer to the rifle, and you go slow enough, uh, you go fast enough to where it's a good pace, uh, and it's nice and smooth, but you go slow enough to where you're not wobbling this around and threatening to hit yourself in the nuts or you know, in the stomach or whatever. Uh, so, anyways, if you have a conventional rifle, you're not going to have to worry all that much, but, again, it's all about, you know, keeping it as still as possible. That way it's nice and smooth. Make sure you're nice and, you know, squared up, and then, one, two, three, four, Try to use mostly your legs for turning, so you're bending your legs as you're going. Oh my goodness, that sucked. So yeah, it's basically you're just bending your legs and twisting your uh, core in order to turn. You're not turning like a turret, you're using your hips to drive it. And that's the main goal here. Use your hips, not your uh, your turret top, if you will. So, yeah, that was a pain in the butt. But we're done now, and it's starting to get light out, so I get to rest because I'm way ahead of schedule right now. So I'll rest a little bit and then take you along for rain sprints, or the rain sprint. So it's light enough out to where I think I can go ahead and attempt this. I don't know what it's going to be like down there, so I am kind of taking a risk. It may be stupid, but basically it's going to slow me down because I'm holding up this camera and stuff. But uh, basically I start my stopwatch and then I jump off and I go and try to take the dogs with me. So, uh, yeah, so anyways, let's see. And go. Come on, kids. Okay, yeah, it's pretty soft. Pretty soft. Okay. Probably not a very good thing. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, I hope I don't die on this. Well, coming up shouldn't be too bad because it's soft. I'll actually get some kind of traction. There. Touch. And back up. Go, 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 go! Go, 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 go! Go! And... Oh, 53 seconds. That wasn't so bad. I'm just glad it's not a sheet of ice. Now since it's soft, I should probably take today and shovel out some steps. So, yeah, probably get some traction sand from like Lowe's or something. Set it down there. Oh yeah. That soft snow made it very difficult. So, yeah. <laughs> it's like running in sand and sprinting in sand. So yeah. 
53 seconds, not bad. Every now and then you should probably take your animals out and play with them because they'll appreciate it in the long run. Just another part of my day, standard of taking the dogs out and actually giving them uh, some time to run around outside. So, they enjoy it. And it's always nice to get some uh, fresh air, especially in the winter when you're cooped up in a house and the air gets really thick and nasty. So, yep. Can't really open a window in negative 40 degree weather and expect that everything's gonna go well or even have the door open. So, or a window open. <laughs> Since the last time I was on, I was able to take care of some personal stuff, and, you know, it's a little bit later. It's only been, like, you know, like an hour or two. Uh, but, anyways, I wanted to go over, you know, my agility work and the basic idea and principle behind it. So, uh, first things first is we need to be able to snap in and out of different positions and uh, be able to get on target because the whole point is that you're... Uh, acquiring these positions for for support uh, or for cover concealment, you know, whatever. So whatever the purpose is, you need to be able to switch in and out of these positions uh, quickly. So um, that's one thing that I've uh, covered with like the SAS agility uh, test where basically you go from standing, kneeling, prone, supine, prone, kneeling, standing, and you fire two shots on target from each one of those positions and you do it as fast as you can. So however many rounds you're firing, that's how many seconds you have to complete the course. And uh, that's really their idea. So you can move in and out of those different positions very quickly. That's one way to do it. Or you could have specific drills for like going from standing to prone and then prone back to standing or, you know, whatever. You can come up with your own stuff, have fun with it. But the point is, is that you're, you need to be able to get into each one of these positions uh, quickly. I wouldn't really say supine necessarily. Supine is more like uh, you got the, the the bad hand of it, and uh, sometimes it can happen from you know walking backwards. Uh, but you know, uh, shit happens. So practice it if you want. But I do on occasion myself. So whatever. Um, but the next thing is bounding. So obviously you're going to have to uh, start from one of these positions that you're in a stable stable stance position, whatever, <clears throat> and then you're moving. And you're moving, hopefully, directly to, like, another point of cover, and you're moving for a certain amount of time, but you're hauling ass while you're doing it. And uh, one way to, uh, it's, uh, one way to test it is to start uh, to test uh, bounding, you know, f do five bounds of, I'm up, he sees me, I'm down rhythm. So, like, two and a half seconds, two, three seconds, or whatever. Uh, I mean, hell, if you really want to work out, do five seconds in full gear. <laughs> uh, I'm just going to be doing it with my LBE, by the way but uh, bounding from cover to cover and what what this is actually going to uh, test whether you're going from standing to bounding and standing again or going from kneeling back to kneeling again or whatever the next position is you need to uh, see how your equipment uh, may adjust and it may shift and that can cause momentum so your upper body might be heavier than it needs it should be and that could cause you when you stop to actually strain your back to try to actually stop yourself so you can uh, figure out what kind of workouts you may need to do or maybe some gear adjustments which brings it right into adjustments so adjustments is not necessarily gear adjustments it can be but I'm more talking about little adjustments like you fire from uh, one position you move five feet or uh, five feet, ten feet uh, to another direction. You're constantly adjusting your position to get a better uh, vantage point or get better cover and concealment. So that's what I'm talking about when I uh, am talking about uh, little adjustments, and that's positional adjustments. So uh, you might, uh, like for shooting around a barrier, might be shooting around the right side, and then uh, you might... Uh, say, okay, I shot three rounds here, so I'm going to switch to the left side, and I'll shoot four rounds here. You know, something like that. Something really small. So little positional adjustments, but this is also an opportunity when you're doing this agility test to check, uh, check your equipment and see if, like for me, I found that a minimal amount on my plate carrier is the best option, and... Uh, Especially when I'm moving around, I already know, and as far as agility goes, that if I'm trying to move really fast, having too much on my chest is going to be detrimental to my ability to actually stop myself and not fall over when I go into like a kneeling from 
bounding. Uh, so, uh, with all that said, that's the basics of you know testing yourself for agility uh, in your gear. So, you know, if you want to go ahead and follow along, go ahead. But uh, that's just uh, my little spiel. So, yeah. that's done with not bad at all so now it's gonna be bounding so from here standing standing doesn't really get in the way so now kneeling A little ass heavy, kind of wobbles around a bit, but the leg holster isn't really transferring weight all that much, so yay. Now prone. Overall, that's not that bad. I was able to get in and out of position pretty well. Kneeling, when you're going down like that, you're transferring all the weight that's on your hips and it tends to want to slide around. The leg holster kind of does prevent that because it keeps it stationary since it's a pretty solid nylon strap, but yeah, <clears throat> I mean, it can only do so much. So going down to the prone, not really a big deal. Uh, so, you know, luckily, there's not really much on my chest, so it's not like it's throwing me forward. So that's what I like about having a belt kit. But overall, I'm pretty happy with the layout of this, the balance and everything. So, you know, it was a good modification to do. Just for those that haven't seen it, two ammo pouches. So six mags on this side, canteen, utility pouch with emergency stuff, emergency rations, my IFAC. And then general sustainment items, stuff that's not really an emergency to get into, but I'll likely get into within 48 hours. You know, weapons cleaning kit, cami paint, electrical tape, you know, small stuff, odds and ends, another canteen, another ammo pouch, and obviously my pistol that's rigged to this belt. So, you know, that's pretty much it. Really not much going on here. Um, just staying put and trying to stay out of trouble, but... I think for the rest of the day, I'm going to chillax a bit, let my muscles heal, because, yeah, my quads, they're burning just from doing a little bit of that, uh, that movement, doing quick movements and stuff, so one thing I can do for PT is work on quick power jumps and uh, work on jumping motions, staying still and jumping or doing distance jumping as fast as I can. Um, that can always help build up power so you can do better sprints or get up faster and stuff like that and just work on your general flexibility because warriors in the past have been valued a lot and been very successful if they could actually display good agility with their gear not slick with their gear and this is just the start this is like best case scenario I don't have my plate carrier in alone this thing works awesome now if I throw a plate carrier on there in my experience the plate carrier actually keeps this still so it keeps it from wobbling around a good amount so you know only i think it'll only help the whole situation i got here but i don't have a sling on here because i i'm not going to 
No, I'm not worrying about that. I'm worried about keeping this hand occupied, so it forces me to. So I'm not, you know, setting it down and letting it just dangle. So, forcing to keep this hand occupied, so this is the working hand. So whatever I'm doing, it has to be with my elbow and my forearm and this hand or this arm. So, that's the point of having this without a sling on. For all of you that care. But anyways, I appreciate you guys watching. If you want to see more videos like this, more vlog type videos, then let me know. But, you know, other than that, just staying safe during this whole COVID-19 stuff and, you know, haze myself a little bit here and there, but within, within sense, I don't want to constantly be tearing muscle to where I can't make any progress, so it's going to be time to relax a little bit. I've been going at it for seven days pretty hard, so I need to... I need to chillax a little bit. So anyways, I appreciate you guys watching. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And you guys, have a good one.